Welcome to MAT 200, Manufacturing Processes and Materials. This is the second part of the um, Plastic Forming and Shaping Lecture. The next uh, shaping process for plastic is called injection molding. Uh, in, the, in the injection molding, the polymer is going to be heated to a high uh, temperature, depending on the type of polymer. It varies between you know, 100 to 200, and then um, the polymer becomes you know, uh, plastic. It can flow. Um, if you have a pressure, um, high pressure, it can flow on, uh, into a mold cavity where the polymer is going to be solidified, and then the molding is going to be removed from the cavity. With this process, we can produce discrete uh, component to net shape. Net shape means uh, no, pro uh, no further process is needed. Then we have uh, cycle time for the injection molding between 10 seconds up to uh, 30 seconds. It is possible that we have more than uh, one minute for some parts. And the mold can be designed in such a way that we have uh, we can have multiple cavities, so it can produce a multiple molding at uh, of one cycle. The injection molded part can be complex; they have uh, intricate uh, shapes, and uh, but there are some uh, limitation about this process. Um, for example, uh, one challenge is the, the capability of um, uh, making um, mold uh, where the size of the mold can, is going to be the uh, part uh, part size. So if in that case um, the design uh, will be very difficult, and the shape um, must be um, designed in a way that the part uh, can be removed, can be ejected from the mold, because in the ejection molding. Um, what happens? The port is gonna uh, be the port is gonna be atta uh, attached to the mold. So we need some um, um, system and a system to eject the port from the mold. So that is the uh, one uh, main concern in the, the injection molding process. And uh, injection molding is very fast. It's uh, economical. Uh, for production of you know large quantity, and if you want to uh, make, uh, for example, less than you know, 100 uh, or 500, uh, this um, uh, process is not going to be an appropriate uh, process because the cost of the molding is very high. Some of the parts that were made by the injection molding are shown in this picture, as you see. Um, some are very tiny and some can be um, uh, large. So all of them uh, can be uh, made in uh, one cavity, you know, because these are, you know, a single part. Um, in the um, mold, we can design it in a way that some um, multiple parts can be produced at one time. For example, this one, and this one can be designed in one step. For the injection molding process, mostly we use um, thermoplastic material. As we mentioned before, we have three, um, two main category, uh, thermoplastic and thermoset. Um, the, but the rubber material is, it can be considered somehow um, thermoset material. Um, Injection molding is mostly designed for the thermoplastic, but there are some cases that we, uh, thermoset and elastomer are, uh, in, uh, um, are used uh, for this uh, process. Uh, if um, thermoset and uh, elastomer um, are, are used in, in the injection molding, some modification ha has to be take, uh, taken into consideration because um, there might be some uh, premature you know, cross-linking. As you know, in the thermostat, uh, if we have cross-linking, that uh, material is already 
uh, become um, solid, then uh, it will be difficult to um, shape it. Injection molding machine has two uh, main components. It's uh, the, the first one is called injection unit, which is this uh, part. And the next part is uh, called the uh, clamping unit, which is this part. The injection unit melts and delivers a polymer mold. And then uh, it also uh, operates as an extruder. It delivers material to the clamping unit. And the clamping unit, we have a mold which opens and closes. And the, the part is going to be um, made at this uh, section. In this uh, picture, you see the one actual machine. And this is a very large machine, you know, because you see this person standing next to the machine. And um, so you can get some uh, idea how, back, how big that uh, machine is. And the, the, um, the capacity, as you see here, it says, you know, 3,000 uh, ton. In the injection unit, this part, um, we have a barrel fit up here. Uh, that um, contains, you know, uh, supply, uh, like a plastic pallet. And then inside the barrel, we have a screw that has two functions. It rotates and then it makes the material because um, uh, we have a heater. So heater will melt the material and then it uh, can be mixed. The next uh, uh, function of the screw is that it can work as a, a ram. So it can inject the molten plastic into the mold, which is the, this right side of this machine, this system. The clamping unit of the molding machine, which is this part, uh, holds two half of the uh, mold in the proper alignment, and then this one and uh, this part. And these are uh, the two half of the mold. And when it is closed, the material will be um, delivered into the mold and the part uh, will be solidified or that uh, plastic part is going to be solidified. Then the mold is going to be open. The part will be ejected from the mold. Here we have the injection molding cycle. Um, this part we have is um, a screw and this is the uh, polymer mold and here we have the cavity which is empty and then um, the next step the screw the screw will go this way and push the material toward the uh, mold and then we have polymer melt inside the cavity then the screw is going to be retracted it goes back then solidification happens inside the uh, mold and then the mold is going to be uh, the molding will be ejected from the uh, mold um, polymers like other material they have uh, ex expansion coefficient and their expansion coefficient uh, can affect you know, the process during cooling because uh, we have a shrinkage and this shrinkage has to be taken uh, into the consideration. Here we have a list of material uh, starting from nylon. As you see, a typical shrinkage for nylon is 1.5. For uh, polyethylene, the shrinkage is more. It's about you know four percent. For PVC and uh, for polystyrene, the shrinkage is uh, a lower about 0.5 percent since we have a uh, shrinkage in the polymers um, we need to calculate the total amount of shrinkage and uh, based on the those uh, calculations we can calculate 
we can design the mold cavity. Here is the equation that we use. Um, this is the dimension of cavity, this one. DP is the molded part design, uh, that, uh, the molded part uh, dimension. S is the shrinkage value. And the, here the shrinkage has to be multiplied by the amount of molded part. And then it gets uh, uh, to the power of 2. Again, has to be multiplied by the molded uh, part dimension. And finally, you have the, the, uh, the dimension of cavity. There are several factors that can affect uh, the amount of shrinkage in polymers. The first one is um, filler material. Filler uh, tend to reduce the shrinkage in polymers. Next is injection uh, pressure, the amount of pressure. If you apply a uh, higher pressure uh, during uh, injection process, uh, it can reduce um, shrinkage also. A compaction time, which is the time where uh, the pressure is going to be applied during injection. If that time uh, goes up, if you have a longer time, um, again, we can reduce uh, shrinkage. Molding temperature. If the molding temperature is higher because it um, can increase the temperature of the polymer melt, so the viscosity is going to be lower, it flows you know, better, then it will allow material to be packed into the mold easier and then uh, finally it reduces shrinkage now we want to go over several uh, processes several molding processes uh, with the plastic material the first one is called uh, compression molding this is a, a, a very a common uh, type uh, type of uh, molding process that is designed for thermoset uh, plastic and with this uh, process, we can make a rubber tire and a polymer matrix in a composite part. And the raw material can be uh, in the form of um, powder or pallet, as well as a liquid or preform. In this process, we have the charge, as you see in the, this is schematic, the first figure. We have charges, right? Uh, located in the uh, mold then um, the mold is going to be heated up as well as you know um, applying some pressure as you see here when apply when you, we heat up the pore it's going to be melted and at the same time we apply uh, pressure. after a certain time the part is going to be solidified and in the, this step, you see the part is ready, then it's going to be ejected from the mold and it's going to be used for the, pro, uh, for the next step. Some of the material that we use in uh, compression molding is, are listed here. Phenolic, uh, melamine, um, urea, uh, formaldehyde, epoxy, elastomers, urethane. And the products can be... Um, vary from electric uh, plugs up to uh, dinnerware you know plates and so on the next polymer shaping process is blow molding this is a process that we use air pressure to inflate um, polymers or plastic into the mold cavity this process if we have um, one you no know, plastic part and it, the plastic part will take will pick up the um, shape of um, mold cavity based on the um, air pressure that we blow inside that polymer and this process is used for beverage um, in high production 
and um, the cost uh, is uh, low because of that reason it has um, a good demand and we have um, two steps generally the first step is called um, making a partisan or another way to say starting two the uh, next part is inflation of that tube into a desired you know, shape. So the shape uh, can vary from one part to another. So based on um, the type of forming, there are two um, categories. One is called extrusion and one is uh, injection molding. So let's look at these processes. The extrusion blow molding, as you see in this picture, it has four steps. The first one is extrusion of that uh, uh, partisan or that um, the tube, which comes from this extruded batter. So it is um, at, uh, automatic process. The polymer comes first here, and then we have um, blowing air system it, it goes to uh, the mold it sits there as you see in a schematic too and this um, extruder barrel is going to be removed then we have a, a continuous shape so the when the air is blown in this um, system because it is sealed that the cavity is sealed tube is going to be inflated and will take up the shape of the mold this is this can be one um, a beverage can and here is the, the final shape the next process is called injection molding uh, injection below molding which is a little different from the extrusion uh, molding the parison is going to be injected through this system and there is a blowing rod as you see inside the mold um, then the mold is going to be closed air is going to be uh, uh, filled in the part will solidify and the rod is going to be removed the part is going to be ejected here we have a um, product of injection blow molding as you see it's a bottle that was made by the, in the process and this one is the original shape or the initial shape of the material um, um, Parisan or sometime maybe uh, the pronunciation might be different Parisan so before uh, the air is going to be filled in it has uh, this shape it is uh, transparent uh, after filling the shape the color might, might change depending on you know what filler they have inside you know within that uh, polymer This one is a little modified version of the previous uh, process. It's called a stretch blow molding, where um, we use the same concept, uh, the same concept of injection blow molding, uh, but there is a slight difference. The difference is going to be um, the rod, as you see, the blowing rod can stretch. So the port. Before blowing there, it's a little larger, it's longer, right? This um, gives a better uh, mechanical property. It, um, it can make the part you know, more transparent and more impact resistance. And this uh, product made by a stretch mold, uh, blow molding. Um, has um, applications where we 
want to use a carbonated beverage carbonated beverage like a Pepsi you know um, other drinks that have carbon dioxide in and uh, they need you know um, material that can resist up to higher pressure right um, because they can produce um, uh, high pressure inside the carbon dioxide they, they want to expand and you see uh, here the schematic uh, this one we have um, the parison and then the parison is going to be elongated and this is uh, this picture shows air is filled in and the part uh, take uh, the cavity shape. If we want to make a, a more complex uh, geometry um, or a larger part, then another uh, pr uh, process can be used. It's called a rotational molding, which uh, we use a gravity inside a rotating mold to produce a hollow uh, shape. And this uh, schematic, as you see, uh, has three steps. It shows the process of rotational molding. The part is going to be loaded for parison, uh, another name for the uh, initial um, uh, part. And then um, in this uh, station, the part will be rotated uh, along with the mold. And then um, it goes to next step where we have a cooling station we have a water spray that uh, cools down the port and then uh, it can go back to the uh, first station to remove the port this part um, this uh, process is um, mostly used for thermoplastic polymers the um, thermoset can be used, but um, the, the use is very rare. Uh, some of the products are uh, boat, garbage can, and um, storage tanks. Thermoforming is the next process. And in this process, we have flat you know, sheet or a uh, film like this one. And it can be um, heated up up to a certain temperature using a electric heater uh, located in uh, one side uh, like here or both sides it can be top and bottom right and then um, that uh, sheet will uh, deform and it will uh, take the shape of cavity and this process, thermoforming, is used for a packaging of uh, uh, large pro products. It can be used to fabricate large items like a bathtub or um, contoured skylight and etc. One of the thermoforming process is called vacuum. And vacuum thermoforming can be done in negative um, shape like this one where we have a film, right? And then we have the heater on the top. On the bottom, we have the cavity. And then uh, we can create a vacuum. So the air is gonna be drowned out. And the part will, or that you know, material, that the plastic will take the shape of this um, uh, cavity, okay? then we keep it there for some time it becomes solidified it becomes harder and then the part is going to be removed and if uh, some uh, um, cutting is needed then uh, the part will be uh, trimmed off from the uh, web vacuum thermoforming can be done with a positive mold as you see in this picture we have a, a mold with positive shape and the film is located up here uh, it can be heated up with the electric heater 
then uh, the clamp uh, this clamp is going to be lowered and it's going to be positioned on top of this uh, mold then um, the sheet will cover the mold the air is going to be vacuumed and the molten um, or the polymer melt will take this uh, shape after some time the part uh, cools down then it, it will be ejected in the thermal form forming process we can use only thermoplastic material the main reason is that thermoset material or elastomer material they already have a cross link so if we reheat them um, to make them soft for the process for the thermoforming they cannot uh, uh, become soft reheating doesn't work for thermosetting so that's the main reason you know we have to use thermoplastic material some of the uh, thermoplastic polymer we use in the thermoforming process is uh, polystyrene um, cellulose acetate abs pvc and etc there are a lot of applications for thermoforming uh, some of them are listed here tin film if you use tin film as a raw material uh, the, uh, blister packs or skin pack for packaging purpose can be produced um, small tools fastener like a nail a screw or some products of thermoforming process if we use you know thicker sheet stock boat hull a shower stall can be made with this process and the polymer foam has a certain characteristic and the characteristic can be a chain can be modified so that gives you a, a good a useful features and this feature can be implemented with thermoforming process um, this process uh, can produce hot beverage coughs. It can uh, create a good insulation uh, material. Um, some of the co caution material are um, produced by thermoforming process for furniture uh, and for household um, uh, uses. Thank you for watching this uh, lecture. If you have any question about this uh, lecture, please um, contact me through my email or my phone. You can call me. This is my phone, uh, office number. Um, or you want to talk about the uh, process um, over a Zoom meeting, please send me email. Then uh, I'll uh, uh, send you a Zoom link to talk about the process further in detail.